Amen. Another opportunity to preach the gospel, to share the good news, the Bible called it, the good news. My God, if we ever need to hear good news, it's today. Amen? Amen. And we're glad that we can share it with you, the body of Christ, and those listening by way of internet. I just asked a couple questions this morning. Have you ever asked God or said to people, where is God when I'm hurting? Where is God when I need Him? Mm -hmm. Think about it now. Have you ever asked that question? Lord, I hurt. <laughs> Lord, my heart's broken. Lord, I'm lonely. I'm depressed. I'm discouraged. My marriage is on the rocks. Uh, yeah, I'm losing my loved one. And where are you at when I hurt? Hmm. Well, we're going to answer that question for you today. Amen. Because I get that a lot. Even seasoned Christians sometimes feel, I said feel, doesn't make it so. Feelings are just that, feelings. But the Bible said we don't walk by sight or feelings, we walk by faith. faith. Amen? Right. So you can't go by your feelings. They'll lie to you. Your feelings will lie to you. That's an emotion. Mm -hmm. Amen? Sometimes we say or do things or act out of emotion. All right? And it's not always good or bad. It's just emotions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to uh, come back and apologize for our emotions. Hello? Hello? Saying things that we shouldn't have said, but we got emotional. And God, where are you at when it hurts? Or what has, I've had him say, what has God ever done for me? Or what has God done for me lately? My whole life is falling apart. My life is in shambles. What, what's God done for me? I get that sometimes too. Well, we're going to again answer those questions today. Whether you want to receive the answer or not, or accept the answer or not, is another thing, or respond properly to the answer. Hmm. What has God ever done for me? Where is God when I hurt? Where is God when I need Him? Well, you mean beyond dying for you? Mm -hmm. Beyond hanging on a cross, shedding His blood for you? Beyond being merciful to you when you don't even recognize it? Beyond being good to you when we didn't deserve it? You mean... Where's God even though I'm hurting and He's still there because He said He'd never leave me nor forsake me and He's not a man that He should lie? Hmm? You see, we just don't recognize it because we're hurting or we're in pain. We're suffering or we're afflicted or we're diseased or whatever. But let me tell you something. That's when He's there the most. I found that to be so in my life. Or anybody else that knows how to believe the Bible and the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and the power. He's there. Even when you don't recognize He's there. You know how I know that? Because the Word says so. That's why it's so important to know the Word, believe the Word, trust the Word. He said, I'll never leave you. Then that's what He means. I'm not going to leave you. Now or ever. He said, I'm with you to the end of the world. <laughs> hey, listen, that's good enough for me. That works. It really does. It keeps me from going deep in despair. It keeps me from falling and not being able to get back up. It keeps me being able to get back up after the devil has tripped me down. Come on. Knowing the Word of God is solid. It's not how I feel. It's not what I'm going through. It's not what's happening around me. It's what's happening within me. Amen. That counts. Your faith. Amen. Your faith. And you being faithful to the Lord. Hallelujah. Because He's been faithful to us. Now, could it be that maybe you're the one that went AWOL on God? Well, if He said He never leaves us or forsakes us, then maybe we leave Him. You could still be in church and still leave God. Because your body's in church, but your heart and mind might be somewhere else. I know a lot of people come to church for a lot of different reasons. Some to worship God, some to praise God, some to get closer to God, and some for a whole host of other reasons. Could it be that you've lost your desire to be part 
of the family of God, the body of Christ, part of the church. Maybe your spirit cooled off and now you're struggling and don't like the feeling. Could it be that you went missing in action? Because the church, the body of Christ, the work of God still goes on with or without you or me. God don't need us. He wants us, but He don't need us. We need Him. Amen. We need Him, and we need Him desperately. Amen. And you don't know that until you're on your way out of here. You don't know that until you're dying. Some people, they don't know that until it's almost too late. But then, I've never seen, just the truth, I've never, I think one time, one time in 41 years have I met a, someone that held out on God who was an atheist and died on their dying deathbed without God. Everybody else who held out on God for years came to Christ on their deathbed. Wow. But this one man would not come. Hard, hard, hard. He had a hard life. He had a lot of problems, but he blamed God for everything. Oh. Claimed to be an atheist. And I was asked by his family when I go see him as an elderly man, asked if I would go see him when he was in the hospital. I said, sure, I'll go see him. I like to be invited usually by the person, especially nowadays they want to sue you for everything. Hello, you got to be careful. I didn't call you. You, What are you doing here? <gasps> then they get all excited and die of a heart attack and they won't blame you. So I like to be invited. But I knew the family well. I said, all right, I'll go. I went. And I walked in, I couldn't believe my eyes. A shell of a man laying in the hospital bed, about that big. And he had a tracheotomy. Oh. <coughs> and this was when you were allowed to smoke in the hospital. And he was smoking a cigarette through his trach. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and I see that thing light up. You know? Yeah, oh. all right. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. I said, all right, you know, you blow smoke on me, I'll witness to you. So, you know, and I witnessed to him about Jesus, and he was, he was a little bit tartable, but, but rude at the same time. And then finally I got some heavy stuff on him and let him know about heaven and hell. And he's, I don't believe it, I don't care. He's pushing his button to talk, I don't care, I don't believe it. Don't you get your Jesus, you get out of here right now. I said, all right, hey, I don't want y'all. Fine. I mean, you sure now? Yeah, you get out. I said a couple words, you know, I can't repeat. So I started to walk out. And all of a sudden, this is, God knows it's the truth. I wouldn't lie behind this holy desk. As I got to turn, I saw the angel, the death angel coming. Oh, my. Saw him at the door. All dressed in black. Mm -hmm. oh, my. Hood over his face. Ooh. Carrying a chain as thick as my arm, you could see all the links in it, and a big ball on the bottom. And he's dragging it towards the man. I said, oh God, I know what that meant. Within minutes, this man was going to hell. The death angel was coming after his soul. So I tried one more time. I said, man, I said, listen, I told him what I saw. He couldn't even talk because I believe he saw it too. And he knew it. He said, it's too late for me. Too late for me. Too and he dropped dead right there. Oh, oh, God. God. Drug him to hell. Oh, but it ain't too late for us. Yeah. It ain't too late for you. I've seen others hold out. One time I went to the hospital, seen a man talk to him the same way. I walked out. I didn't get five feet down the hall. I heard him call me, Preacher! Preacher! Come back here. Please, come back here. So I went back. He said, ah, You're right. You're right. I, I, I'm ready to repent. I need Jesus. But he, he missed hell about that much. But he made heaven. But why, why do we wait so long? And when I hear their stories, it's because the devil has lied to them. They believe the lie that all their problems was because of God. All their problems was because God was mean. God didn't never love them. God didn't care because they were never taught right. 
Never had the Oh, they went to church. Most of them went to church, but they were dead churches. They were more worried about their money and hurting their feelings and telling them the truth. There's going to be enough preachers in hell to start a Bible college. Oh, amen. Won't be a good one, but they'll be down there. That's right. Because they didn't do what God's called them to do. That's right. Hallelujah. Listen. Mm -hmm. We lost the desire. We get cold. We get burned out. Not God. We want to put other things and other priorities over the Lord in the Lord's day. We're the ones, not God. We are responsible for our soul. The Bible even tells us, I believe it's Jeremiah, it says, you can't save your own soul. No. He says it in the Word, you can't even save your own soul. That's why we need Christ. Amen. That's why we give Him our life, our heart to save our soul. Thank you, Jesus. For all eternity. Hallelujah. I know that some of these terms are army terms, but after all, aren't we living in a fallen world? Aren't we living in a world gone mad? Aren't we living in, in times where we're supposed to be in the army of God? Mm. Amen. If we will but listen and obey Him and trust Him and stop trying to do everything our way or do it in our own strength, People have come into this, this door and other doors, other churches that we've been involved in. They come in, they come in one way, they leave the other. Some of them come in and stay. Some of them come in and go. Some of them come in and say, well, that ain't for me. Some of this is for me. You know, there's mixed bags, mixed people. You know, different strokes for different folks. But Jesus died for everybody. Amen. But not everybody wants Jesus. Did you know that? Mm. Or they'll say, well, I want Jesus, but I want the world too. Can't happen. He said, choose one or the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Or God in money, or God in the world. It's either God or it is it. That's right. Anybody listening? Amen. Hallelujah. God can and He does plenty for us, whether you recognize it or not. Did you hear what I said? Yes. We're all here because God done something for us. Amen. 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 You're here by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, not your own strength. He even says whether you have strength or not. He even says whether you, whether you breathe or not. Whether you're checking out today or not. Mm. That's why he said, be ready in such an hour that you think not. The Son of Man will come. It's up to us to be ready. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Can you imagine standing before the Lord on that day, and you will, and God to give an account now of your life, That's right. and you've messed it up, and you've burned